Welcome to the Lindsay and Tony podcast, where we talk about spirituality, business, and life experiences. In this podcast, we're bringing our private conversations to you. We believe that it's through discussion, action, and reflection that true change occurs. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 120, Treat Everybody Like It Could Be Their Last Time You See Them. In this episode, we talk all about how it's so important to really be mindful of each time you have a conversation with people and how you want to leave them better than when you started with them. We also talk about how you can, if you haven't had the chance to do that and they've passed away, how you can still communicate with them using these techniques that we've experienced for ourselves. We hope that you enjoyed the show. Hi guys, welcome back. Today's episode is all about treating everyone just as if it's the last day that you're going to see them. And today's episode is actually dedicated to our sister-in-law, Kylie. We didn't think that we could do any kind of different episode. We had plans for something else, but change of plans um, because we think this is important to speak about, right? Yes, it's very relevant in our lives and it's the only thing that I actually could speak about right now because it's on my heart and we wanted to give a message to all of you just to bring your awareness to that, to realizing that it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, you don't know when the last time you're going to be around the person you're around today or tomorrow. So like Lindsay said, this is dedicated to to my sister-in-law who was this gentle soul, beautiful inside and out. she left a six-year-old daughter, my niece, Emma, that I love dearly. And I've been doing a lot of deep reflection since this happened. It just happened a couple of days ago. And uh, so, yeah, this episode will be all about that, about the people that are actually here right now. And also, it can be about how if you didn't get a chance to share what you wanted to with these people that have passed away, how you can continue to communicate with them. We know it doesn't feel exactly the same as humans, but in the spiritual way, there's amazing things that can come from this when you do continue the conversation after they've transitioned from their physical body to the the heavenly realm. So from our last episode we did, it was actually the day before, um, two days before she passed away, we released it. It was called the top five regrets of the dying. And in that episode, We talked about Bronnie Ware, who was a nurse that took care of people as they were on their last weeks, their last days alive here on earth. And she asked them, she had thousands and thousands of patients. She asked them, what are your top regrets? And she came up with five that she heard over and over and over again. And I'd like to refer to that. And if you haven't watched that episode, go back and watch that episode. It's very powerful. And one of the things that sticks out to me is one of their regrets was they wish they would express their feelings more. And I could totally relate to that right now. Um, in this moment, I could relate to that, that there's definitely things that I thought about over the last day or so that I wish I would have expressed more. But obviously we can't go back to there. So part of this episode too is talking about how even if you wanted to express those things to people when they were here and when they were alive and you didn't get that chance to, understand that you can't express that to them right now. How do you do it? You just speak to them right now as if they're here. You don't want to speak to them as if they're past. You don't want to speak to them, you know, kind of like I look at it like when you're talking to little kids, you could either talk in a little kid voice to them or you could just talk to them normally. And I think that's in my heart, that's what I feel they want you just to talk to them normally because they can hear you. So right now in this moment, you could express all of your feelings that you wanted to express to that past loved one. You could express that right now in this moment. And I've been doing that and it's brought so much healing to me. It doesn't make everything perfect and better. There's still a lot of pain, obviously, but it brings a lot of healing. It does. And the interesting thing was with that last episode that we put out there, we didn't have any clue that this was going to happen. It just ended up being put out days before. Um, So I feel like things are somehow aligned when we don't even know what's going to take place. But that episode has a whole new meaning 
to us now. And one of the things that we did, what we've done since our past loved ones have passed is we've opened up the conversation to have with them. And one of the things that you can do is if you miss that moment of treating people as if it was their last day, because um, you might have had that extra conversation, um, you may have been more present with them when, when they were here, asked more questions, um, listened more, talked less, wh whatever that may be. And I think that's something that we've been finding recently is we wish that we could ask more questions. But what you can do is you can ask those questions that you want to ask. You know, maybe they had certain dreams that you didn't know about, but you wanted to take time to figure it out and, and hear it in their own words. And how you could practice this is talk to them out loud and then wait for the next thought to come in. A lot of the times it will feel like you're making it up, but in actuality, it should feel very easy and flowy once you're in that feeling of autopilot to communicate with them. So, um, and if you're feeling like you're getting in your head, go for a walk outside and talk to them that way because that really works when you are doing two things at once, I find, for me at least, um, when you're walking and talking to them or drawing and talking to them. So this is something that you can do. Um, some other things that we found, we, we discovered a lot. I feel like because this isn't really a planned episode of bullet points that we know we're going to cover, it's more in the moment. It's a little bit different. Um, over the years, both Tony and I have had different losses and every loss is different. But I think every single loss that we've had, we've had new lessons, don't you think? And it really helps us to think about what would we do when we are communicating with people that are still here? How will we treat them? You know, what's the last thing that we want to say to them for the day? And I think that's really special. And it's making me think about your mom. Because yes. um, we spoke with your mom the other day. And just there are certain things that certain people will do at the end of a conversation. And you could feel the love. And whether it's stating love you or it's hearing love you, um, feeling love you, um, or whatever it may be, you want to leave people better than when they came to you and I think that's important. You do. Going back to what I said at the beginning of this episode about one of the regrets of the dying is they wanted to express their feelings more and I would say express your positive feelings just like Lindsay was just talking about. Express the, to the people that you care about that you love them. You don't necessarily have to say it with your words. People can feel it. You could show it in the tone of your voice you can show it with a hug you could show it silence is so powerful and a lot of times that's all it takes to show somebody how much you love them and then on the flip side too sometimes there's negative things that negative like the elephant in the room like negative conversations that need to be brought up and that's how you build real relationships is you know like with me and Lindsay if she doesn't like something I'm doing she could bury it and put it underneath her and act like it's not there. Or she could just come out and be like, Tony, I don't like how you leave the cabinets open. <laughs> or I don't like, it could be something it's even more dramatic than that. Mm -hmm. I don't like how uh, you get frustrated sometimes. I don't like whatever it is. Sometimes it's even very traumatic stuff that you have to talk about with close family or friends. I want to suggest have those conversations because... It's through having those vulnerable conversations that you're able to build these deep, deep connections. Because I noticed that throughout my life, when I would avoid the vulnerable conversations, it would create a resistance between me and that person. And it wouldn't allow us to go to that deeper level while they're here. And that's the whole point of while we're doing this episode is to help you understand that you could develop deep relationships with all of your family and friends that are in your life right now. And even if they passed over to the other side, you could still have those conversations. So if someone passed, if someone's passed over to the other side right now and you felt like you had to get something off your chest, you could say that out loud too. It doesn't have to be all positive. You could talk to them as if they're here right now. Yes. And going along with what Tony, what you just said, um, you may have this feeling that you're thinking, oh, I want to express myself. I want to bring something up you may not get the same response. And that's, that's the thing you have to realize, that this episode is all about what you can do on your part. 
It doesn't mean everyone else is gonna meet you where, where you're at. And that could be tough, but you have to continue to express yourself fully, to be honest, be truthful, be vulnerable. And it could come back or it might not. It could either bring you closer or you could just get that expression off your chest, but you know they're not ready at that time. And that's okay. And I think that's the hard part you know, when you're doing this. It is the hard part because you think that, oh, if I go and express this and I'm going to get the same energy back. Look, there's a reason why expressing your feelings more was one of the top regrets of the dying because it's so, in this planet that we live in, it seems like for the average person, it's so hard for them to do that. So don't think that just because you're doing it that other people are going to do it back. Um, Wayne Dyer would always talk about how his mentor, Carl Jung, would say, if you want to become self-actualized, one of the keys is you have to be unattached to other people's reactions. You have to be unattached to other people's opinions. So this goes with this 100% to where when you express your feelings all the way to whoever it is, you have to be unattached to how the outcome is because everything that's happening, it's happening for a reason in that moment. And maybe the person in that moment, they don't know how to react to it. Maybe it might take them a month, maybe it might take them a year, maybe it might take them 10 years to process what you said to them. But it's like, it's kind of like a balloon. I think of a balloon. With a balloon, you have to let all of the air out and then it's empty. So it's like us too. If we keep all of this stuff inside of us, we're, we're building up this resistance, we're building up this, this frustration. And it's our job to focus on us because we could only control, it's hard enough changing yourself, it's hard enough fully expressing yourself. And you have to understand that, get, express all of your feelings to everybody, the positive, the negative, like I said, when, when you need to, and you will see how powerful this is. For those of you, for those of you that are already practicing this, one, you're gonna see how vulnerable it is. Two, you're gonna see how challenging it is mm -hmm. at times. And three, you're gonna see how rewarding and fulfilling it is, no matter what the reaction is from the other person. It's true. And I think that that's a good place to leave off on, don't you? Mm -hmm. um, so share with us if, if any insights have come up or anything that you're thinking of doing that may be new for you or uncomfortable um, just by listening to this episode. And we hope that you make every single moment in your day memorable, be very present with the people that you're with, and enjoy your day. I just wanted to say I appreciate every single one of you that are new to our podcast episode or to our podcast. And for those of you that have been following us for the last two and a half years as we've been creating each episode week by week, I appreciate you and I love that you're part of our journey. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. If you liked it, leave a five-star review on iTunes. And remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel too. If you can think of anyone else that would love this episode, share it with them right now on social media or email. And remember, getting results is a process of learning, applying, and reflecting. Stay consistent and continue to grow every day.